Hi students, uh, welcome back to Lectures Club. Today we are going to talk about DIAC and TRIAC. So the contents of today's lecture are we will talk about the electronic components DIAC and TRIAC. Then we will also talk about their internal structure and the equivalent circuits and the flow of current through the DIAC and the TRIAC. We will also discuss about the VI characteristic curves of DIAC and TRIAC. Before I proceed further, I recommend you kindly watch my lecture on Shockley diode and SCR. Uh, you can see the link in above suggested videos. I will also put the link in below in the description box. The reason is that the diode, triac, SCR and Shockley diode, they are all connected uh, with each other. It means that if you know the internal structure of uh, uh, Shockley diode, <coughs> and the mechanism of current flow through the Shockley diode, you would or uh, you will be uh, able to understand the working of DIAC very easily. Similarly, if you understand the working of SCR, you will be able to understand the working of track very easily. So I recommend you kindly watch my lecture first, then come back to this lecture. Okay, if you have already watched that uh, lecture, so we'll move uh, uh, towards the, uh, our today's lecture. So what is DIAC? DIAC is basically a four layer two terminal diode which supports alternating current. This is the major difference between uh, DIAC and the Shockley diode. In a Shockley diode, Shockley diode was not able to conduct the current in the both direction. It means Shockley diode was unidirectional, but the DIAC is bidirectional. If you divide its name into two parts, DI and AC, DI stands for diode and AC stands for alternating current. So a diode which can support alternating current is known as DIAC. Here you can observe it in the symbol, you can see that there are two thyristors basically connected back to back with each other. Uh, in the left, uh, on the left side of uh, the slide, you can observe that there are two p type layers and three n type layers oh, and <coughs> there are two terminals ak1 and ak2 uh, why the i call this ak1 and ak2 because this is the bidirectional device it can conduct the current in both directions to understand the uh, equivalent circuit of diac let's start from these three layers uh, for the sake of simplicity i have given the names to these layers this is p1 layer which is a, a p type material semiconductor material this is n1 layer this layer is n type semiconductor material and this is p2 layer this is also a p type semiconductor layer to uh, make a diac was, uh, what we do we just create or do doping into p1 and p2 layers first uh, we did some doping of n type material into P1 uh, layer. Similarly, we did some doping to into P2 layer and we call this layer is N3 layer. And we also connected two terminals at the two ends. And these terminals are common to the N type layer as well as P type layer. And similarly, this terminal is also uh, common to n type layer as well as p type layer if you observe closely uh, what actually we did we created two shockley diodes one shockley diode contains n2 p1 n1 and p2 layers and the other shockley diode contains p1 n1 p2 and n3 layer and they have common terminals these terminals are connected to the anode of this Shockley diode or thyristor as well as to the uh, cathode of this thyristor. Similarly, this terminal is connected to the anode of this thyristor as well as uh, cathode of this thyristor. That is why I call them AK1 anode cathode 1 and AK2 anode cathode 2. In the form of a circuit, we can also represent uh, uh, these, uh, these two thyristors something like this. Here this NPN transistor basically contains N2, P1 and N1 layer and this PNP transistor contains P1, N1 and P2 layer. Similarly, this PNP transistor contains P1, N1 and P2 layer and this 
NPN transistor contains N1, P2 and N3 layers. So this is the equivalent circuit of DIAC. It means that we can represent a DIAC in the form of simple circuit. Uh, contains four uh, BJTs, two NPN BJTs and two PNP BJTs. They are connected with each other, some like this. The cathode, uh, sorry, the cathode of this PNP transistor is connected to the base of this NPN transistor. Similarly, the base of this PNP transistor is connected to the collector of this NPN transistor. Sorry, I call the cathode, this is collector and base. So, the collector of this PNP transistor is connected to the base of this uh, NPN transistor. Similarly, the base of this PNP transistor is connected to the collector of this NPN transistor. Similarly, the base of this PNP transistor is connected to the collector of this NPN transistor and the base of this NPN transistor is connected to the uh, to the collector of this PNP transistor. If you observe, this is one Shockley diode, the equivalent circuit of Shockley diode. This is an other equivalent circuit of Shockley diode. So that is why I uh, emphasize that you should first uh, watch my lecture on Shockley diode. Now we understand uh, the characteristic curves of DIAC. You can observe that the characteristic uh, curves of DIAC looks pretty similar to the sh curves of Shockley diode. Uh, but the Shockley diode cannot work in the reverse bus condition. That is why on this side there is no curve shown uh, for uh, the Shockley diode. But the diode can work in both directions. So the curve on the opposite side is pretty similar and opposite to the curve on the negative side as well. But in Shockley diode, uh, you know that we discussed that why Shockley diode uh, cannot uh, forward bias uh, until the forward breakover voltage is reached. When we forward bias the Shockley diode, Shockley diode do not forward bias until the forward breakover voltage reaches. But before forward breakover voltage, Shockley diode uh, do not able to conduct current. So in this region from zero to the forward breakover voltage, the Shockley diode uh, is in the forward blocking region. This region is similar to the DIAC. Similar to the Shockley diode, DIAC cannot work until the forward breakover voltage reaches. When the forward breakover reaches, the, uh, the DIAC uh, moves from forward blocking region to the forward conduction region and it starts conducting. You can observe that when we st uh, started from zero to the forward breakover voltage because the diac was not conducting the voltage drop was very high this line is showing the voltage drop because we were increasing the current uh, but diac, diac was not able to conduct the current so voltage drop was very high but once the forward breakover voltage reaches the voltage drop suddenly decreases and diac starts conducting why uh, just uh, this uh, why, why why does this happen uh, i as i as i told you in the case of shockley diode uh, that this region i mean uh, this junction be, uh, the collector uh, the junction between the collector and the base of npn this common junction is reversed bias when we forward bias uh, the Shockley diode. For example, we connected this terminal to positive side and we connected this terminal to the negative side. Uh, this junction between the meter and the base of this NPN transistor forward biases as well as the junction between this emitter of PNP and the uh, base is also forward biases. But because this junction, because this common junction is reverse bias that is why this side of the diac do not conduct the current so why uh, so what does uh, so how uh, after the forward breakover voltage the diac start conducting uh, let me explain it again we applied the positive terminal here we applied the negative terminal here so this side is forward biased and this side is also forward biased but the, this junction, common junction, 
do not favor biases it is reversed bias so if we increasing as uh, going if we going uh, uh, we uh, starts increasing uh, the uh, potential difference between this terminal positive terminal and the negative terminal a voltage reaches when electrons from this emitter side enters into the base of this emitter npn junction uh, into the base of this npn junction the electrons are able to break the barrier of this junction and enter into the base as well as the collector of npn junction i repeat it again if we start increasing the voltage between this terminal and this terminal what does happen the electrons from the emitter of this npn junction enters into the base by breaking uh, by breaking the barrier of emitter and base after this after that these electrons enter into the collector too this collector is connected to the base of this pnp transistor so electrons enters into the base of this pnp transistor and this transistor is also forward biases but, uh, but this point reaches when we reach at the forward breaker voltage before the forward breaker voltage this transistor was reversed biased and this transistor was also reversed biased but when the forward breaker voltage reaches npn transistor forward biases so as a result it forward biases the pnp transistor too and the current starts flowing from this side towards the this side in this region in the at this point the track has entered from forward blocking region to the forward conduction region but once the diac enters into the forward conduction region it start conducting until uh, its current uh, goes below the holding current holding current is the minimum or threshold current below which the diac again goes from forward conduction region to the forward blocking region but you can observe also when we increasing the potential difference between the positive and the negative side because the diac was reversed bias the voltage drop was very very high until we reaches the forward breaker voltage but when the forward breaker voltage is reached at this point the current is called the switching current when switching current reaches suddenly the diac goes from forward blocking region to the forward conduction region and suddenly the voltage drop really uh, voltage drop really drops i mean the voltage drops really drops uh, and the current increases suddenly and this current is greater than the holding current and here is the point minimum current uh, uh, now the current if, if current goes to the below to the holding current again diac goes into the forward blocking region what i explained you is entirely opposite uh, if we if we change the uh, ter uh, terminals of the battery if we connect the positive side here and the negative side here the curves is, is similar but in the opposite direction and this point is called the reverse breakover voltage the concept of reverse breakover voltage is entirely similar to the forward breakover voltage but the, the but the difference is the direction of the current now we understand what is triac triac basically uh, is is a form of uh, two scrs two scrs connected in opposite direction but their gate is common uh, the difference between the triac and scr is that triac can conduct the current in both directions means triac is uh, bidirectional whereas the scr is unidirectional here is the internal uh, structure of triac you can observe that here the in the p time a p type uh, semiconductor layer two n type layers are doped on uh, opposite sides whereas in this p type layer a one n type layer is doped this terminal is common to n layer as well as p layer similarly they have individual terminals here this n type layer has individual terminal and this p type layer has is individual terminal but these terminals are connected with each other similarly uh, this uh, uh, side this n side is connected 
with the gate terminal the concept of gate you should uh, see my video on SCR then you understand why we need a gate in case of SCR as well as in case of triac if you know why there is a need of gate in case of SCR then definitely you will understand why there is a need of gate but I will elaborate what what the, is the purpose of gate in case of triac the terminal this terminal gate terminal is uh, common to this P side as well as this N side this is the symbol of triac here you can observe that two SCRs are connected back to back but in opposite direction to each other uh, we can also represent this system in the form of this equivalent circuit here this NPN transistor represents the layers of N this P and this N N P N and this P N P N P transistor represents P N P this P layer this N layer and this P layer similarly this P N P transistor represents the layers this P layer this N layer and this P layer and this N P N transistor represents the layer this N layer this P layer and this N layer so the gate is common uh, uh, the gate of this PNP transistor is common to the gate of this NPN transistor so here you can observe that uh, this is one SCR and this is another SCR and they are opposite to each other now we understand how does actually current flows uh, from triac for this um, first we connected this terminal to positive uh, terminal of the battery and this terminal with the negative terminal of the battery by doing this this N region will be reverse biased will not work because it is connected to the positive side but this P region will work on the opposite side this N region is connected to the negative side this will work but this P region will not work so this junction will be forward bias and this junction will also be forward biased but this junction will not be forward biased so what will happen current will not flow okay now what we do we apply the potential at the gate so when we apply the potential at the gate I mean we create a potential difference between this terminal and this terminal this terminal is positive but it is less positive as compared to this terminal I mean we are creating the potential difference so definitely one terminal is at lower potential and one terminal is at higher potential so when we apply uh, less potential as compared to um, higher potential and this terminal there is a potential difference created or electric field is being created between these N and P terminal because this is at higher potential and this is at lower potential so what does happen the electrons of this N region will start moving towards here towards the gate so some current will also flow into the gate moreover these electrons will be pushed towards this region too towards this N region so this N region will collect more and more electrons from this region so it will become more and more negative and work as a base of this P and P transistor as well as this P side will work as a base of this N P N transistor and this P side is working as a collector of this P and P transistor I repeat again when electrons will start moving from this region towards this N type layer so this P type material I mean this P side will work as a collector of this P and P transistor and this N side layer will work as a base of this P and P transistor or in other words this P side layer can work as a base of this N P N transistor so when more and more electrons a huge number of electrons will enter into this N type layer they will break this region this junction they will break the injection because this will be more negative as compared to this side this will work as a emitter this will work as a 
collector and this will work as a base of this NPN transistor. I repeat it again. This side will work as an emitter. This P layer will work as a base and this N layer will work as a collector. So when collector is at higher potential, P is at lower potential and N is at or more lower potential. So what does happen? This NPN transistor will be forward bias. These are the conditions of NPN transistor. So now the current will move from this side towards this side. The electrons will move to this side and thus towards the this side. This is the flow of current from negative side towards the positive side. This is shown here. When we apply the positive terminal here and negative terminal here and we apply the gate, positive terminal at the gate, what will happen? This positive terminal of the gate will forward bias this NPN transistor. When this NPN transistor will be forward bias, so this NPN transistor in result will forward bias this PNP transistor. So current will start moving from this side towards this side as well as towards the gate. This is actually shown here. The electrons are moving towards the gate as well as the electrons moving towards the P side as well as to the NPN between the NPN transistor and the PNP transistor. This is PNP transistor here and this is NPN transistor this is here. Now in the second case what will happen when we apply the negative terminal of the battery here and the positive terminal of the battery here because usually we use the triac for AC applications so AC current changes its polarity so when the negative half cycle will come polarity will be automatically changes now this terminal is at the negative side and this terminal is at the positive side so because this terminal is at the positive side so n layer will, this n layer will not work and because of this n uh, i mean because of this negative terminal this p layer will also not work as a result what will happen this p layer will work and this junction is forward bias but this p layer will not work so this junction will be reversed bias in that case what we do we apply negative terminal at the gate in other words we try to create a potential difference again like the previous condition we try to create a potential difference between these two terminals when we create a potential difference between these two terminals as well as what what does happen there is an electric field is being created between this region and the le electron starts flowing from this region towards the gate 2 as well as the electron starts moving from this layer towards this layer the electrons starts entering into this layer when electrons huge number of electrons will enter into this layer what does happen the current starts flowing from there to there let us understand with the help of equivalent circuit. When we apply the negative at the gate, what does happen? A huge number of electrons from this layer starts entering into this layer. So when huge number of electrons enter into this n-type layer, this n-type layer became more negative as compared to this p layer. So when a huge number of electrons enter into this n-type layer, they elect these electrons actually forward biased the base of this PNP transistor. You can observe here. These electrons forward bias the PNP transistor. When this PNP transistor forward bias, as a result, this NPN transistor will also be forward biased because the current starts moving and the base of this NPN transistor is connected to the collector of this PNP transistor as well as the collector of this NPN transistor is also connected to the base of this PNP transistor. You can also observe here when starts current starts moving here when electrons entering into the base of this PNP transistor current starts moving. So here this NPN transistor 
represents the layers of n layer, this n layer, this p layer and this n layer and this p and p transistor representing the layers this p layer, this n layer and this p layer. This concludes the whole process. Here you can observe that triac is diff different from SCR. SCR is unidirectional whereas triac can work in both directions. <coughs> uh, now we understand uh, the characteristic curves of uh, the triac. Uh, the, does, uh, do the curves look scary? <laughs> Absolutely not if you understand the working of SCR. First we focus on uh, this side because if we understand this side the working or understanding of this side is entirely opposite to this side. So here you can observe if we don't apply any potential or, or a current at the gate what does happen the triac needs a very high voltage uh, to move from forward blocking region to the forward conduction region. So when we apply some potential at the gate uh, the triac will uh, drop voltage very less and will move toward the forward conduction region easily as compared to don't apply at the gate any potential at the gate so if we apply more positive potential at the gate what does happen the triac will again drop less more less voltage and will move from forward blocking region to the forward conduction region more easily as compared to blue curve as well as the gray curve. So what uh, what will happen after uh, going from uh, the forward blocking region to the forward conduction region we get the holding current. Holding current is the minimum current below which the triac will come uh, back toward the forward blocking region. It means it will again, uh, uh, it will again stop working. But uh, another point is that when we once we apply the, uh, the pulse at the gate and if we remove the pulse at from the gate it still starts conducting it does not come back uh, again to the holding region here we are using the gate just to trigger just to trigger uh, the triac just to give the triac a push after that the electrons when electrons will move let's say we applied uh, the, the positive potential here and the negative potential here. So if we don't apply any potential at the gate of this NPN transistor, then what will happen? This NPN transistor will take a huge amount of voltage, let's say VBRF3 to move, uh, I mean to go into the saturation region. And when this NPN transistor will go into saturation region, then this transistor PNP will go into saturation region. So if we apply the positive potential at the at the base of this NPN transistor, what will happen? This transistor will drop the voltage very less as compared to we don't apply any potential at the base of this transistor. So when we apply the positive voltage at the base of this transistor, this transistor will easily go into saturation mode which is shown and in by the blue line and the pink uh, sorry blue curve and the pink curve when this transistor will go into saturation very easily then uh, then this transistor will put this pmp transistor into saturation mode so this is the importance of the gate in case of scr and the triac we can trigger we can turn on uh, SCR as well as the triac at, at any point. Otherwise, we need a particular forward breakover voltage to uh, move SCR as well as the triac from forward blocking region to the forward conduction region. Uh, the working of these, the understanding of these curves is entirely uh, opposite to this. I mean, here the VBRF is represented by a reverse uh, breakover voltage and VBRF2 is represented by reverse uh, breakover voltage 2 and VBRF1 is represented by the reverse breakover uh, voltage 2. Only the difference is the direction of current. First the current is moving from this direction from this negative side if I take the electronic current to the positive side but in case of these curves the electrons are moving or current is moving from this direction 
towards the this direction. The understanding is completely similar what we understood in case of these curves. I hope uh, you like this uh, very crucial lecture. Uh, do not forget to subscribe uh, my channel. Uh, so I will come with more videos on other electronics devices and their applications. If you if you like the video, kindly hit the like uh, button as well as the, the subscribe button and the uh, bell icon adjacent to uh, the subscriber button. So you will be notified when the next when the new videos will come. See you soon. Bye bye.